Good morning. Welcome to your Monday morning, early morning intuitive guidance. I'm Dr. Bonnie Nussbaum, America's kick-ass coach and psychologist. Here with some words of wisdom for our day. And we not only have some words from Outrageous Openness, letting the divine take the lead, but I have some words up on my computer screen from my friend and local soul guide, Kayleen Welsh, who does a Sacred Sunday Seed Thought. Good morning, Holly. Which gives us something to think about during the course of the week. So I think I'm going to read some of that also. <clears throat> Welcome to whomever else is here. I haven't seen a waving hand yet, but it might be Cindy. We shall see. People are popping on here. Good, good, good. All right. So if everyone would like to take a nice deep breath in and out. Good morning, Deb. There's Cindy. Yes, welcome, welcome. Glad you guys are here. We have an interesting reading today. Interesting reading, and then a little bit I want to add to spice it up from my friend Kayleen Welsh, who does a Sunday Sacred Seed Thought. So I can give you her um, contact information, too, if you want to check out her stuff. <clears throat> so, outrageous openness. Letting the divine take the lead. Good morning, good morning. Ah, okay, well, we'll see how well your connection hangs on there, Devin. Hello, Tracy, welcome. Need another drink here. There we go. And now the garbage truck is going to have to go through, so we'll see if we get great howling and carrying on in the background. So we are reading from page 18, for those of you who like to follow along in the book. And it's just a little... Two pages, and we'll see what grabs you. Page 18. I happened to turn on NPR one day during a mind-boggling interview with an efficiency expert. <laughs> he had written a book on procrastination with 44 critical steps to be followed in his Act for Success plan. I was soon giggling so hard I had to pull the car over at the corner of Clay and Viserato just to be safe. Even the poor interviewer sound flummoxed. He asked, so you're telling our listeners they must follow all 42 steps? Absolutely, every single one, the expert intoned, in the proper order, otherwise it will not work. And he began to fire off the list again. My head was spinning like a bad carnival ride. Well, said the interviewer, to be honest, that's all a bit daunting. Isn't there a simpler way for people to begin? No, said the expert gravely. As a master, I devised this plan scientifically. <laughs> Good morning, Judy. Welcome, welcome. And of course, if people are confused, they should take my seminar. Of course. Wiping away tears of laughter, all I could think was, yep, he's the master of how to overcome procrastination without God. I remembered how life was indeed a dreary road before I allowed the divine to lead the way. I ran from one self-styled master to the next with my problems. The combination of a delicate nervous system and a good dose of ADD made my life often derail. But at some indeterminate point, perhaps more from exhaustion than evolution, I pretty much gave God control. And though problems still come, solutions usually follow in fresh and novel ways. The other day, I met an interesting writer in a cafe. We started discussing the book proposal I had been stuck on. She offered, well, I could help you do it. These usually take about 30 hours to create, and I charge $250 an hour. Wow, are you kidding, I gasped, doing some quick calculations. That's over $7,000. Well, I do have a handy, flexible payment plan, she said. Then I remembered. That's what a book proposal costs without God. When I demurred and left, I sat in my car and invoked divine order with my full heart. If you wish this written, I cannot do it on my own. You know my limits. But the perfect route is already selected, so if this is your will, fling open the doors. If this is meant to be, please bring the right help. So she's asking God for the guidance instead of paying $7,000 to have someone else do it. Within a month... A writer friend of mine in New Mexico serendipitously emailed me one of her own proposals. Good morning, Carolyn. Hey, you popped into my head tonight, she wrote. In case you're still working on that thing, just use mine like a map. You'll finish in no time. She was right. So the gist of this is when we're 
handing our power to someone else, a physician, a professor, a guru, a whoever, we're not taking on the whole beautiful responsibility for engineering our own life. Can we listen to other people and take in ideas? Absolutely. But we do not want to hand over our well-being to someone else. That's not the way to go. <clears throat> I remember when Tony Robbins went through this whole period of time where he kept reiterating, I am not your guru. <laughs> I'm not your guru. And I had a friend who used to say, gee, you are you. In other words, talk to the guru within. Look within. There's guidance within and all around. And again, when she put it out there, when Tosha Silva put it out there, I want to write this book. I need help with the book proposal. You know my limitations. Send me some support. Within a month, there was the support. Not costing her $7,000, right? Okay, so many of us, for the past, well, the whole COVID period for sure, but even before then, I've been kind of swirling around and muddling around and feeling like we're in the dark night of the soul or trying to figure out where do I go from here? What's my next step? And I've been advocating just take a step. It doesn't even really matter which direction you take it in. Just take one and more will open up for you. More will unfold. So what I'd like to do today is, again, my friend Kayleen, who bills herself as a soul guide, um, does a Sunday Sacred Seed Thought. And this particular Sunday Sacred Seed Thought um, came from Victor Hugo, so I'm just going to read the quote, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about the full moon lunar eclipse that's coming on Tuesday, on Election Day. There are no accidents. <laughs> so, the, the quote says, good morning, Diane, good morning, good morning. The quote from Victor Hugo says, nations, like stars, are entitled to eclipse. All is well, provided the light returns and the eclipse does not become endless night. Dawn and resurrection are synonymous. The reappearance of the light is the same as the survival of the soul. So what we're looking for is the reappearance of the light. The reappearance of the light. And it's happening. I mean, even now, daylight savings time, I peeked out when I was walking the dog. I'm like, yep, can't see the stars as well. But there's an gorgeous orange glow on the horizon. So that was a pretty good replacement. <clears throat> so for tomorrow... On November 8th, on Election Day, full moon lunar eclipse, 5.02 a.m. I assume that's central time because that's where Kayleen is located. Let me read these words and see if it helps you feel again and again and again. There are no accidents. This total lunar eclipse is one for the record books, a cosmic exclamation point to the energy we've been experiencing for the past couple of years as we've explored what we need to bring to the future from the past. There's a whole lot we're going to leave behind, but some things we bring along with us. This full moon shares the heavens with the nodes of fate, Uranus, who's the great awakener, Venus, the divine feminine, and Mercury, communication and perspective. Could we not use some communication and perspective, people? Ceres, the great mother, brings her healing to our karmic past. We've been paying karmic debt here while providing an opportunity to see life in a new and expanded way. Expansive consciousness dissolves obstacles and opens up the field of infinite possibilities, right? This eclipse occurs on election day in the United States as a divided country in the midst of a Pluto return seeks stability and some sense of unity. Good morning, Mel, welcome, welcome. So between those two things, between that little reading from Kayleen, and if you wanna find her stuff, it's Kayleen, K-A-I-L-E-A-N, Welsh, W-E-L-S-H dot com. That'll take you to her website and you can see what all She's got going. She's actually the one who's hosting the um, women's retreat I'm going on to Mexico in January. I'm so excited. Reappearance of the light. Yes, it is a beautiful way to say it. So just, um, we're on the cusp of the reappearance of the light. And again, even when things look like a gigantic shit show, good morning, Carrie, welcome, welcome, it does not mean disaster is imminent. Sometimes I think the universe goes 52 pick up with the cards of our lives and we get to decide how to pick them up again and move on. 
Sometimes they're, good morning, Gwen, welcome. 14 people here today, this is awesome. Apparently we all need to hear this, right? So the gist of the, chat, the part in the book that I read on page 18, for those of you who jumped on late and maybe wanna go back and look it up, the gist of that is everything becomes much easier and simpler. Good morning, Joe. Not necessarily um, easy, easy. Ooh, I just slide right through my life. But easier and simpler because you have a perception of, yeah, this is the path. This garbage I'm walking through right now is part of the path. And I appreciate that part of the path. <laughs> yes, 52 pickup with life and we decide what we're gonna pick up, we decide what we're going to take with us, we decide what we're going to leave behind. And many of the systems that we currently have in place need to be left behind, all right? So I was t uh, texting with someone the other day who was talking about her healthcare experiences with a friend of hers who had had a back surgery and the she said the healthcare system in America is a mere shadow of what it used to be. And um, how many of the people who are currently caring for her friend are not qualified, not qualified in the least to be taking care of people. So again, but sometimes things have to get worse before they get better. This is all part of the upheaval that's occurring. And again, when, um, think about a, a boat that's upside down. As they try to right that boat, there's a lot, of, a lot of groaning and complaining that goes on, isn't there? Here we are, experiencing the groaning and complaining. But again, if we look at this lunar eclipse for tomorrow, cosmic exclamation point to the energy we've experienced for the past several day, years. An exclamation point suggests what? End of sentence, end of sentence. So we can be imagining and putting out the energy of change and openness, that divine feminine, willingness to receive, um, willingness to perceive things in ways other than how we've been perceiving them. Good morning, Linda, welcome, welcome. We're just about done. But again, when we turn things over, use your God jar. If you made a God jar, God box, whatever you use it. And if you've been dutifully stuffing things in there over the past six, nine months, maybe now is the time on tomorrow on the eclipse. Wouldn't that be amazing to go back through all the slips of paper that you've put in your God jar? with issues that were worrying you, with things that didn't seem to have a resolution, yada, 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 and see what happens. See, see how they've changed. See how they've, many of them are no longer issues. They're no longer issues. Because you were willing to let go, let God buy the time, allow it to be, let nature serve its purpose, moving things forward, let the universe guide things for a while, Whenever, I'm going to suggest to you, whenever you are feeling overwhelmed, it is a sign that you're hanging on too tight to something, okay? So allow overwhelm to be your signal of, I need to let go more. I need to let this go. I need to have faith and trust. I need to take a step forward, whatever that's going to mean. Taking a step forward can be anything from, I'm going to stand on my porch and watch the sunrise, to I'm going to have a slow cup of coffee this morning and just be to, I'm gonna throw out that, th there's something that's, I emptied a box and the box has been sitting there and today's the day the box is going to be put in my car and taken over to the warehouse so it's available to put someone else's treasures in there. Yes, exactly, feeling overwhelmed is a sign you're hanging on to something too tightly. Hold on loosely, don't let go. If you cling too tightly, you're going to lose control. Those song lyrics were spot on, as it were. So today, what I want you thinking about, what I want you feeling into is a peacefulness, a, a willingness to let go of what no longer serves, a willingness to turn over the things we don't have solutions for. Again, the 
level of our consciousness that created the problem is not the level of the consciousness that's going to solve the problem, right? So we need to up-level for that. And a huge step in up-leveling is turning it over, letting it go, letting it be, being curious, watching how things unfold, even with the election tomorrow. Approach it from curiosity. I've already voted. Nothing else I can do. I talk about it with people, but that I've done what I can do. Now I'm sending energy. Now I'm sending divine energy out into the universe. Let's move things along, whatever, whatever's the highest and best good. Do I pretend to know what's in the highest and best good for the whole United States or the whole universe or the whole whatever? No. I just know from my perspective, my limited perspective, what I see, I act accordingly, I put out faith and trust, I tune into the guidance, and on we go. And on we go. All right. Good morning, Bonnie, right at the end, but it'll be posted again. This is a really good one. We're talking about um, allowing and the lunar eclipse tomorrow and what it's going to mean energetically for those of us who believe that the same way women's cycles move on the moon, human cycles move on the planets. Simple as that. So have an awesome day. We'll see you again tomorrow. Remember, you're capable of far more than you think you are. And again, we're in this cosmic exclamation point. Bye.